Welcome back to Geek Show. Whoa, 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 whoa. Help desk. You want to know something, Tony? I'm pretty happy right now. I figured out how to That's use my new, get my new headphones to do active noise cancellation while they're plugged in to, my, to, my, to the cord. Ooh. I'm happy. Ooh. Things are going great. Was it just a setting? You just read the manual. Turn them on, but hey, I did just it. A, just a RTFM. <laughs> yeah, turn them on. Just, yeah. We just call that an RTFM moment. Yep. Brought hmm. to you by Lando. Mm -hmm. This is Geek Show Help Desk, where we talk about tech, gadgets, and sciencey related things. And uh, we will, we, you know, read the manual. That's a good thing, usually. Mm -hmm. I love reading the manual, to, but, you, but, you but not till after you've tried. On your yeah, own. There you of course. That's the of way. Course. Of course. Let's introduce our panelists starting at podcast right or left. I don't know. It's Owen. Hey, that's me, Owen. Find me here. You can follow me on Twitter if you want, at TechnoOwen, X, whatever. Uh, yeah, that's it. All right. Next to Owen, Jaren. Hey, I'm Jaren. Uh, you can find me on Geek Show Arcade or Twitter at Jaren. There we go. Right down there, we got Lando. Hey, it's me. It's Lando. I'm so hyped right now. I'm watching a baseball game. The Padres are going to win. It's going to be a great night. Let's go. No, we're podcasting right now. You're not watching a baseball game. He's Why would I do that at the same time, Tony? He's, he's DVRing it. DVR. That's right. It's, mm. yeah. my, my TiVo's watching it for me, Tony. Of course. Of course yeah, that's what's happening. Obviously. TiVo. TiVo doesn't even exist anymore. Freaking oh. Shohei Otani should a home run. That guy sucks. Yeah. All right, and we got Uncle Squinky back. Howdy, howdy. Hello. Just happened to be in town for a wedding this weekend, and I hung around for a couple extra days to... Uh... You're at Tony's house. I recognize yeah, the picture I am. behind you. Yeah, I took that picture. Yeah. Ooh, that's nice. It's a great and picture. That picture, exactly. Yeah, so I uh, decided to hang out for a few extra days and, uh, you know, be a burden on Tony and mm -hmm. Megan and be on the podcast later. That's yeah, what I like to do. You know what? I'm going to take a few times to take up these to impose. Mm hmm and we enjoy it all right let's uh go oh wait and me i'm here and we have a host there we He's go <laughs> up in the right up in the up in the corner up in one of the corners tony. check me out on twitter at quad t tony or on the other geek show podcasts okay um but that way as we do first we check if there's any emails do we have any emails yeah we do woohoo all right, we got an email from Mike, Michael Shane. He says, hey, guys, last week you covered the exploding pager story at the end of the show. Yeah. In the in-between, Owen said he would love to hear stories where our government has carried out similar Mission Impossible-style operations. Mm, yes. You should check out the story about the ANOM phone, A-N-O-M, all caps. Basically, the FBI facilitated the creation of an ultra-secure Android phone and ran the company in the background. It became the phone of choice for criminals, and the FBI was able to help bring down a huge oh, European drug operation. Awesome. That is a giant honeypot is what yeah. they made. That's they so basically, cool. They're like, that's... look, these, these are so secure. Please use them. It was covered on the podcast Darknet Diaries. That's I love awesome. that podcast. I, except for the guy's narration sometimes. Sometimes it's just not super great. But I do love the stories. Nice. That's how I feel about Dresden. Or check out the book Dark Wire by Joseph Cox. Dark oh. Wire. Oh, are are okay. you triggered, Owen? Um, I was for a minute. You offended my Dresden sense, but <laughs> yeah. I went away so quick. Mine too. Mine too. I know when you all reported the pager story last week, it was really new. As the story has unfolded, I think the idea of it seemed much cooler than the execution, exactly. which could arguably cons be considered an act of terror. Yep. That's absolutely yep. true. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very true. Just my two cents. Once I saw the... Once I saw the videos that they showed where it was it's, going off in grocery stores yeah. and without any, without the care of anybody else around them. Ugh. Yeah. Well, gross. That's what remote bombs do. They go off and they just remote. happen to go. Yep. Yep. Um, he says, I'm definitely no American exceptionalist. The U S has done horrific things under the banner of national security, but I really like the ANOM story because the plan was really clever and narrowly targeted. Also, the phone seemed really cool. I would love to check one out. Anyway, sorry if I got a little heavy there at the end. No need to read this on the show. Ha, too, too bad. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good email. Yep. He didn't say don't read it. And he says no need to. I totally oh. agree with the Anom phone stuff because um, nobody got hurt. Spycraft, with right? That kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Data, you know, data intelligence. You know, capturing we got to figure out if that's still around, though. What if they're still, what if they're still operating? And they're just like, eh, hey, we got what we wanted from it, so we just sold the company. 
So now there's a legit secure phone company Probably with a huge some back door. Crypto, crypto bro. Yeah, maybe Flappy crypto Bird phone. guys. <laughs> Flappy Bird phone. Yeah. He ends. I just thought you might find it interesting if you hadn't heard about it. As always yeah. on the show, Mike. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Darknet, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Darknet Diaries cannot cannot get enough of those guys. All right. Any other emails? Nope. Okay. Mm, sad face. Well, let's get along with the stories then. Hmm. Let's start with that was a Jaren size pause, just mm, so you know, Tony. It's because I'm trying mm. to decide. We got a lot of a lot of interesting stories here uh you know what let's let's get the apple stuff out of the way first uh Mm -hmm. apple reviews are in or i mean reviews are in for apple iphone 16 and 16 pros that's uh you jaron oh no i'm talking about my review oh you're gonna review it oh okay well yeah yeah, let's do that yeah all right so i I have one he has one yeah i have one it's right here um you you also played around with a iphone 16 my wife has one um they're they're solid not going to spend too long on this review because they're just like every other previous phone boom a lot to talk about yeah the the main difference is being the camera button which is kind of fiddly you have to get used to it um you really have to get used to it i wish it was not flush against the phone or the cases really i wish it it was stuck out a little bit you know like every other button on the phone but Mm. but no um Mm. Uh, no, the but, camera, but on, yeah, but on the the camera quality is actually pretty great. Um, the photographic styles, while this seemed kind of like a gimmick to me, it's actually pretty cool. Now, iPhone has had this in previous years, but it was always something you selected, and that's how your fo- your photos turned out, and you couldn't change anything in post. Now you can change things in post, and you can do away with Apple's not so great post processing which mm. flattens the picture. Um, so you can give it a more contrasty picture so the darks aren't so washed out. Um, other reviewers have said that you can't save that as a default. You can, though. Um, you just need to make sure your tone is to, like, negative 50 or negative 60 or so. I found that to be a, a pretty good setting. Um, and uh, you save it as your default, and it the pictures turn out pretty great and apparently the sensor has been up updated on on the main oh. um image sensor and of course the ultra wide it has more detail as well so great uh great great what's the word camera great great camera no best camera ever it's always great the best camera ever. improvements for the camera so um, great camera yeah, best so camera the, ever the the pro max has a <laughs> most incredible slightly bigger screen it's noticeable when you first get it, but you, the effect will probably wear away after like a day or two. So I wouldn't get it based off that. I wouldn't get this. If you have a 14 or a 15, I, I That's do, not, do not upgrade to the 16. It's, there's just not enough there. But what about well, the AI, Jaron? It's not out the, yet. Yeah. yeah. Well, not, <laughs> not only that, not but the But the it rumors, will be. Yeah. yeah. The rumors around the 17 are actually pretty good, so... If 17 is looking to be a big bump, and that's usually the case with Apple, oh, that's minor a year, year major year, year, minor year, year major. Oh man, not even those, close. Those rumors yeah. could completely get thrown by the way. No, side. they're good rumors. I'm are not they? talking about them, but they're good they're rumors. They're good rumors. Are they now? <laughs> the quality rumors. I the best air. rumors. Let's Everyone go. Everyone knows it. You know it. I it little little Italian. My story now. They're a little Italian. It's a good rumor. <laughs> if you have an i15 Pro and AI turns out to be worthwhile, you don't need to upgrade because the 15 Pro will get it. Oh. Um, if it does turn out to be a worthwhile upgrade, then if you're on a 14, maybe I can see the 16 being okay, but wait but for the by, AI stuff. Yeah, but yeah, wait for the AI before you jump in Don't, on that I'm one. I'm in no rush. It's like phone. what uh, Marquez <clears throat> Brownlee on MKBHD says. Never, or, or was it? Uh, Don't buy his wallpaper Burge. app. <laughs> Don't buy it. Don't buy it. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it, it was either him or it was the Jerry Rig Everything guy, Zach, said never buy a product based on future promises. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Very, very true. The That's iPhone smart. 16 is quite a compelling upgrade, though. Um, they've upgraded the processor two generations this time. It has eight gigs of RAM, unlike all previous base iPhones, which mm-hmm. is great. Um, good camera improvements there. So the only thing it really lacks, in my opinion, is the 120 hertz screen. If that doesn't bother you, get the normal 16. It's solid. Nice. I think this is probably the slimmest margin of difference between the pro and the non-pro versions oh yeah the, uh, yeah totally. they're running out of 
they're running out of cool jumps. That's the thing. They're running out of huge gaps anyway. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like we don't really have anything that's worth saying huge. Yeah, getting personally, that pro I don't see any reason for myself to buy a pro over the regular one anymore. There's just not enough difference. No, I can't no. justify the cost for the few things I get. The only difference is if you really love taking pictures, I don't, and you really love a 120 hertz screen, then the pro is worthwhile. Does it still I, have I've an also, on-screen button? Does it still have the on-screen? It's always photo on button? for the pro too. Oh, yeah, okay. pro has an always on-screen. The 16 does not. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, that's another differentiator. But again, but just, as it's, always, it's you get enough. you get those processor updates, which are fantastic. But on the other side of the fence, they're really do you do you have you to use you the camera button? Yeah, you don't notice. Yeah, do you, you have to use the notice. camera button, or can you no, use the, no. or is there still a software one? There's still software. You can. Oh. There's well, so even, many different ways to get even, to the camera to even take even picture, right now on the videos. regular phone. You can use your volume buttons as camera buttons too. You yeah. just don't get the trackpad feature. Hmm. The right. trackpad, like once you get used to it, it's pretty nifty, but it's not worth buying a whole. How how old how old were you when you figured out sliding on the space bar moved the cursor back and forth in text messages? Like two years ago, it three was years like ago, two years ago for me. Oh, yeah, really? Oh, okay. It's the best thing That's, ever. This is like a couple of days ago. So it was more amazing <laughs> when <laughs> Apple had the 3D touch screens because you didn't I, have to do it on the space bar. You could do it anywhere on the keyboard, and it was quicker. The 3D touchscreen was so good. I missed. That's but my. But then that's they took out the 3D feature. touchscreen, and that's when it moved to the space bar. And uh, uh, that's the only reason I like the 3D touchscreen. Mm-hmm. I loved that feature. I thought it was very cool. As somebody anyway. with big thumbs, it was very, very upsetting to know that I've been angry, needlessly. Yep. Mm-hmm. For years. I felt the same way when I learned about it. I was like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So many so people nice. don't know about it. It's, it's nuts. Use the space bar. Long press on the space bar. You can move that cursor around all you want. Anyway, there's the iPhone. I don't think it's going to convince any Android diehards out there, I wonder, just I wonder, like I'll... any previous iPhone. But it's yeah, a it's a great phone. Cool. I think the upgrade cadence now is probably four years. Like yeah. four? I would no. unless something unless some three. huge unless some huge breakthrough comes in battery life, right? Like three well, that... for our crowd. I'm talking about the normals. Oh, like for the I think you can get by yeah. four years yeah. and still be oh on, on wow, absolutely iPhone, on iPhone for sure. On Android phones, unless you get a flagship, maybe not four years, just because the mid rangers kind of usually are a little underpowered yeah. after about two OS updates. But but yeah, yeah, yeah. So my 13 Max is still okay. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Unless you're really jonesing for that. So the, the, goodness. the other interesting part about the iPhone 16 is iFixit has declared it the most repairable iPhone ever. That's true. Can you believe this? I saw cool. the story. I went, "What?" I just watched a YouTube so, video of a guy that ordered all the parts separately and built an iPhone from scratch to see if it was, was cheaper it a, than a buying. Sixteen? Uh, no, it was oh. a fourteen. You build a Franken phone. So to put it's this, the, in, it's can, all the parts. Order all the parts yeah. from Apple now. And so he was wow. like, wow. Your stuff. Yeah. To um, put this in context, the previous iPhone fifteen had a repairability score from iFixit of 4 out of 10. Mm-hmm. The iPhone 16 gets 7 out of That's 10. A it's a huge jump. jump. What's wow. the change? Uh, so Parts? A, it's the more repairable. European Union. <laughs> That's the change. Uh, yeah. um, one of the biggest changes they, they talk about in this article is the sticky glue holding the iPhone 16's battery in place. So before, when you were turning apart to replace the battery, there was like a pull tab. You would and like pull it out. And it would work to varying degrees of success. They have since changed it. Um, so now the glue will debond when a small amount of electrical power passes through it. So it's actually pretty cool tech. Whoa. Nice. Um, the only downside of that, it does require a special tool to do, but it's not that big a deal. And apparently it's not very expensive. Um, the other thing that they talked about that was interesting was the, the button that Jaren talked about before is part of the frame and you can't change it. So if you want to replace if the button breaks, you have to replace the whole frame, Oof. which can be a little Yuck. costlier than replacing just a button. So that's a thing. How often um, do buttons break, especially when it's flush like very, that? Not very often. Not very often. Yeah. Um, it's easier to when get I into now. <laughs> so, um, my kids have it. They'll show they you. Also, they also touted and praised Apple for its well-written repair manuals, um, which is a change from before. Um, it also has a dual entry design and easy to access several components. Do you think and they're being compelled? access to the battery for quick and easy repair- repairs. You so think big that... deal. It's a big deal. Do you, do you think it's, it's being deal. compelled? From like, do you think it's being legally compelled from the EU or just mm. Apple changing their tune? 
knowing Apple, right. it's probably compelled in some way. Yeah, yeah. Be, Apple's not changing both. their tune. Well, and the yeah. fact that well, the fact that they have to do it is not exactly, you know, it doesn't mean they have to do it well, and they're right. doing it well. So right, there's, there's well, points that, for that. There's they've got a certain that. amount of, of pride in what they do. I have a feeling. Oh, they, for sure, they, Apple does they, big time. When, once they start walking down that that road, they want to at least have it work for what they are trying to accomplish. Yep. Cool. Yeah. So anyway, I thought the story is pretty cool, and just uh, you know, so that's a that's a win for iPhone users going forward. Is easier to repair than before. Seven Indeed. out of ten. That's pretty good for iFixit. I should yeah, now, not I should quite as good as his... Owen's kids, but you know, not bad. <laughs> Seven out of ten for iFixit repairability on a mobile device is pretty great. Pretty good. Days. Yeah. But let's see. I, I know a lot of. Uh, I know there's a lot of laptops that don't score a seven out of ten, let alone phones. So. Right. Yep. All right. Uh, let's move it along to. Uh, Most Elon. Elon. Eloning all over Twitter again. Mm. So he is nerfing the block button, which <laughs> means people that you've blocked will now be able to see your posts again. And what? Yeah, you blocked them, but they'll still be able to see your posts. Posts. The one where he draws the line now is blocked accounts won't be able to interact with the accounts that have blocked yeah. them. That's dumb. They can just go to any other social media forum and his blast them. And it's and it's a safety issue too. This is not just for political or gossiping reasons. Some people block people because like exes or, or whatever so yeah, that stalkers, they can have stalkers. so that yeah, so that they can have they can have a free life without ugh, ugh, that's stupid. It's not yeah, it's not, I don't think it's a good move. Um they basic he basically says uh his reasoning is why have a block access feature if the person that you're blocking can just go create another account and follow you again? No, oh my goodness. So it doesn't matter. Who cares? It's like, well, it's not really because about it's like that. it's like <laughs> saying, why do we lock the door when there's a big window next to it they can break? Because you <laughs> exactly. do what you can. Uh -huh. You do what you can, yeah, Elon. You... What a dingus! What a dingus! Exactly. So look for that to roll out uh, fairly soon. I'll, I'll tell you what, though. Just you know, I've been off Twitter now successfully successfully now for a number for a number of months now and i Feel could freer? not be happier you're freer oh more thing sure. more more did you get more more things done oh yeah or... never since so last week i think i talked about in between i dropped all social media and any app with an algorithm oh off my yeah phone, that's right, right? dumbified well, dumbified? You dumbified your whole phone is it still dumbified completely it or... is still dumbified wow. completely how does it feel what, happiness happiness through the roof oh my like, gosh dude you're seeing my son i, I, might have to I try when it. i first did it i was like <laughs> i was going through that phase where i was pulling my phone out because i was bored and i realized oh my phone doesn't do anything anymore so i put it back and so those moments where i'm like reaching for my phone for the instant hit of dopamine are becoming less and less and like i'm spending more time with my kids my family my wife like things are better but you have like life. apps you can still use on there right like you can still your, use your audiobook apps and stuff like that yeah yeah, okay. so I still have I still have a podcast app. I still have an audiobook mm. app. I still have my work apps, Outlook, Teams, YouTube. Jira. Um, I still have YouTube, but that the only time I'm watching some... YouTube is before bed. That's the only time I watch YouTube. That's if it. I was going to do that. Fair. I would have I'd have to keep YouTube. I'd have to keep the Google. You don't uh, have to feed. Oh, oh no, okay. I, I have this to. This the Google's because... news feed. I just use the Google's news feed to get headlines. This is how I I do my prep for the podcasts that I'm on. I That's have fair. To, throughout the day I'll see what's the stories and if I like a story I'll Let's you go. know send it back it for later. whatever and to myself and and read it later. But yeah, if if it was take up a to breath, me, Lando, it'll be okay. If it was up to me to have to um, dedicate it, dedicate time to sit down and do show prep outside of just you know when I have five or ten minutes to waste, I would have a lot less show prep. That is for sure. Yeah. Um, See, I've, I've been trying to reduce during oh, your breaks at work, like on your laptop or computer. Yep. Instead of your phone, that's what I've done. Well, both. It's just hard. It's like, not as. It's not quite as accessible yeah. when you're like to me. That's my method, I, right? So I have to put a lot more effort in if I do it on the desktop. I probably end up seventy percent on the phone and thirty percent on the desktop. Yeah, that's probably yeah. about what. It was. I've been trying sacrificing. to reduce my TikTok. I've been trying to reduce my TikTok. So it's like, well, that's and, an easy and I've one. noticed just delete it. No, and that's the thing. So like, I'm like, I need to, <laughs> and so my hours have been like, like less than an hour a day. It's been my is on there. on TikTok, I... and I hate I hate it. Here's why I hate it, because I can confirm the what Lando's doing is working because I am less stressed, mm -hmm. and 
I'm not, I'm reaching for my phone less, you know, because I'm like, that was my main one. I didn't do Reddit or Twitter or whatever. So, but now yeah, I'm I don't, like, I, I, should do I, all of I don't know how you do it, Owen, because I would not have that kind of willpower. Just like, I need to make a conscious effort to use it less because I was, I was, I mean, I was pulling it out if, all the freaking time. Yeah. Cause just for the instant dopamine, like I'm bored. Mine's been, mine's it's, been more of a, mine's been more of a turkey. The cold turkey is the only way it was going to work for me. What's that? What mine's been more of a transfer. I start. I'm like, you know what? If I can spend this much time on social media, I can get through a lot of my backlog and audiobooks. And so mm-hmm. that's true. Yeah, yeah. I, I was For like, sure. as long as I'm, as long as I've got something. You've inspired so. me. I'm gonna delete more stuff on my phone right now, right now. Maybe wait. Goodbye, flappy done. birds. Maybe, maybe Screw wait. you, crypto. Maybe we tell we're done and then, and then do that. <laughs> pay attention to your podcast, Jared. Goodbye, make him do a story. They don't make him pay attention. Did no you more say butt goodbye, stuff. Goodbye, butt stuff. Man? Mm-hmm. Well, you can delete the, that one now, I guess. Uh... Do I get my only? Do I get my money back? <laughs> I'm your only subscriber. Nope. Sorry, Sorry you already spent it. It's mine. Oh. All right, let's talk about uh, an interesting option here from Cloudflare. Cloudflare. Can you guys? So we were talking. It had to be a couple weeks ago about scraping the internet and how yep. google google was like well yeah you don't no, have no. to it was nvidia oh yeah NVIDIA that's right was scraping that's uh, right like 88 years worth of youtube videos every day yeah and we were like and we were like well you're kind of in a tight spot because if you don't want the internet to be scraped and then google and other you know isps in the search results won't find your stuff right and google is going google was also involved in a lawsuit i thought or something where they were like well, we don't want it to be scraped, and Google's like, "Well, it's always going to be scrapable because you can you you can choose, I guess." Yeah, that's well, the way lose, the internet lose, works. You lose scraping, yeah. you lose there's, your ability to have us fu- list your stuff. So. There's a difference between Google doing that kind of scrape and what Nvidia was doing was yeah, kind of doing. just they consuming. Were tra- they were trying to yeah. train their AI. They were training AI. Yeah, on free Google data, Google's thing was also saying that we're going to use your data, like yeah. we're yep. going to scrape your data and use it. Yep. Well, Cloudflare obviously is private internet, right? So it has the ability to control all aspects of network transport through the layers. Um, They are now offering people that use their service, uh, which is like a private internet. If you understand cloud, private internet, um, Cloudflare does it. There's one called net X. So assume I'm I'm dumb. Oh, when explain it to me, Mm -hmm. I'm 12. Well, so you can pay for a private, Basically, a private internet. Everything is owned by them. You get, and it, it works kind of like a proxy. If you know how proxies work, uh-huh. but it's a but mm-hmm. it's more complicated. So they control all access to all everything that you have, uh, or everything that's on the web, and everything has a button to block or turn off. Essentially, they basically all network traffic is controlled, and so and they call it your private internet. It's your internet. Um, you can pay to share. Like you, the different the different plans. Like, oh yeah, you're it's your private internet, but you're on here with the, all of our other customers. Or you can pay the big bucks to have your own, you know, completely completely firewalled off experience, yeah. basically. Mm-hmm. So because they have that level of network control, um, they are now allowing their customers uh, a new a new package, a new option to buy called AI Audit, and AI Audit. Along with a bunch of other tools. No, um, oh, oh. What the what's heck happening? Is that? Is this the bus stuff app? It's not me. That was me. Kevin. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought um, my phone was muted. It was not. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's okay. It's happened to the best of us, Jaren. Looking at uh, you. I feel like I'm in church during sacrament meetings. Yeah, Someone's phone just went off. <laughs> 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 or you have the people that don't hear it, and they're and you're just like you're. <laughs> the really that's even worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so basically, they're gonna let they're gonna let people um they're gonna let people pay for the privilege to 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 connect. So um, it's kind of an interesting way a solution to that to that thing. Like you have an option to click in. Not only can you add or deny um different scraping services you you can you can allow some like you're like yeah i want google to scrape my data so i show up in their searches but i don't want scraping from any others or whatever and you can also one of the other features of this tool is that you can pay to see how often 
So if you don't want to block anybody and you just want to see, hey, how this often is, is my granular. site being mm -hmm, how how often is my site being scraped? Like, would it make sense for me to start selling my data versus just letting like, am I getting enough hits or you know scrapes that that uh, it's worth maybe turning it off and selling? And then the third option is that you can you can make a deal and work through work through Cloudflare to set up the ability to sell access to. Mm -hmm to certain people. So it's a pretty cool tool. I feel like when we were talking about that, we were like, how do you even, it's the internet. How do you even put controls on that? And here's how you do it. Now, Cloudflare, of course, selling the pickaxes and shovels to this gold rush, they are going to, you know, I feel like private internet in that way, you know, your private cloud is, is a huge step into the future of what most companies will do for all things network but because it's it's the evolution of a proxy of an internet proxy um so but it's cool it's cool tech ai audit it's called yeah that's crazy neat all right um let's talk about how uh speaking of ai and whatnot and cloud uh which is where all the ai is stored apparently and oh who who could have ever seen this coming not us guys that work in it mm -mm. <laughs> uh aws says customers are turning back to on-prem what what oh, it's Boom! becoming who could, My use... blown! who could have ever seen this happening <laughs> i hate that i hate it so much though <laughs> we've been we've been talking about this in it all the people that well don't make decisions for how things work in IT. Have been talking about this for years, a couple of years now. Everyone's been having this massive push to get everything into the cloud, everything into AWS and Azure and Google Google Cloud and all that stuff. And hey, it turns out it's pretty expensive. You get the first decade for free. You get the first hit for free. Exactly. And then now, and now they turn up the big bucks. Well, and to be fair, like cloud. Like, to be, to fair. be fair. I would say there's probably some price gouging happening for the cloud providers as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because once they get you it's, in their cloud, they know yeah. unless you want to make a big push to get the, out of the cloud, the, you'll pay the money. The smart deployments and smart IT shops have actually planned for this event. Diversified. Moving, yeah. moving back should hopefully, if done correctly, should be pretty easy. However, I know there's a ton of jank happening in the cloud. Oh, yeah. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. I've participated in the jank, mind you. Um, and that does make returning very difficult. Yep. It's not just the cost savings. It's the uh, um, cost, how it's allocated in the financials. Like if you have an on-prem data center, it's in one bucket versus if it's in the cloud, it's in another bucket. And the bucket yep. for on-prem is typically a bit easier to handle on the street. Well, and not only that, but it's Wall less street. visible, right? The yeah. the subscription costs, you have a really nice breakdown. Here's what I, here's what my total cost of ownership is in the cloud per month. Right. That that number is it's obfuscated on-prem a little bit. Yeah. It, it's hard, though, because when you think of disaster recovery, though, like cloud was the solution, right? Like mm -hmm. you're right. going to have people doing a, both, right? Like you're going to have but, backups going out to the cloud now. Hopefully. I don't what, know. Instead of running they, fully. What, is, what does the corporate world do for um, disaster recovery and business continuity? The cloud. They, they the offsource VR. it. Oh, that's you crazy. Off, yeah. I, I, you off, It automatically, if there were to, it, so first of all, all their facilities are level five rated, right? Earthquake, flood, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And then you set up, then you pay for the privilege for them to have a DR for you. And basically if anything happens, they just migrate yeah, or you, or you'll, you'll make shadow backups in different regions right that world, is yeah. that is such a big difference mm -hmm. from higher ed and corporate because in the higher ed world like all of our um dc um so data continuity and business or disaster recovery stuff we just do it at other universities right so uvus is all down at uh, utah tech right oh that's interesting that's so smart. We, we have yeah. physical infrastructure in the data center and, and vice versa they have physical infrastructure in my data center yeah, we just for uh, their data, in the, data. In the private sector, you either put it all on a cloud platform for your DR, or you rent space and do your own storage, right? Data center. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. I never even thought about that before, but that's a huge difference between the higher ed pu public yeah, space and public sure. and private. Yeah, but yeah. So what they're seeing is a, a lot of companies are now moving to a more of a hybrid solution, which yeah. should have been the uh, answer from the start. 
Yep. yep. From uh, a lot of our opinion and and uh, what we saw happen as everything pushed got pushed to the clouds. So yeah, that's rough. I loved. I love. If you've got the money, do the cloud. Because <laughs> as an IT professional, I love that it's there. No drives. No alarms going off in the middle of the night. No having to go pull drives out of the bay. You can like all that stuff. All the hardware. And all the all the upgrade costs are all mitigated through the price of the like you don't have to worry about oh all my drives you don't have to come up with a plan my drives are aging out I have to go swap those out I don't my my back end infrastructure the servers dying you know yeah. I see what you're saying and you pay for the convenience if you can yeah. afford it but the problem is is as the businesses get larger yeah that it tab does, that adds scale up. Mm -hmm. that, it when does you not... get to enterprise scale and, it's not that's a the thing. When you scale in a data center, it, I think it's a lot easier to swallow than it is scaling up in absolutely, yeah. you absolutely. You, know I mean? you pay for you, have, you pay a, through the nose yeah, for that it, privilege. It, it's one time costs versus versus ongoing costs yep. too, which makes it exactly. also makes it easier. Yeah. Um, so. so even though I've, I've I've really you know large VMware infrastructure is is going to cost you a pretty penny. It's a one time. It's up cost. front, right? Yep. And no, no, you and, pay for is the service contracts. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's been interesting to see this uh, unfold, and it's just kind of like a lot of us are just like, "Yep." We told Do you think you. it's the price of hardware, so. <laughs> the price of the price per, of storage per gigabyte per dollar or whatever, has well, come low enough thing. to make Mo it worth it? Or most of most of the uh, cost, at least at the last time I was looking into it, for an AWS specifically isn't yeah. the storage of the data it's the co it's, the, it's the movement of yeah. the data you Let's, pay per yeah. per if exactly you move that data from one location to another or how or many have people hit, access, access that hits data, yep. things go over your transit gateways all that kind of stuff that is when it starts to really yeah. add if, if you're doing right. just storage in the cloud storage in the cloud is actually pretty dirt cheap like yeah. it's yeah. really right. affordable it but and when you get up to like and the move, yep. there it is because like compute that's the thing, well. right? Like when if you have if you have a system that's making a million API calls to that data a day, uh -huh. AWS realized, well, we can we can control that. Yep, that's more valuable. Yep. Mm. So yeah, there's oof. It's it's interesting, and it's this is the kind of thing that's not gonna not gonna slow down. You know, it's it, it, like all new tech that's replacing old tech. You see a pendulum swing. Yeah. And right mm -hmm. now the pendulum is swinging back the other way, and eventually, eventually it's gonna land in the middle, and there's gonna <laughs> yeah. be a hybrid. Right, and until the next okay new flashy there, Orlando, thing. You having a stroke? What's no? Base, uh, they're just it's a it's a baseball call. it's a baseball stroke. <laughs> well. Then that case, struck him out, but why don't you tell us about the new baseball tech? This is story so freaking cool. So this 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 story is a smidgen old. It's from July of this year. Still, not the most like recent thing, but I just came across it. Um, so there's some new some new baseball tech, right? So if you don't know by now, I'm a huge baseball guy. I am. I never I'm noticed. Just, yeah, never. Mm -mm. Um, Couldn't tell. So they've developed a new story. Is more type boring than baseball. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. This is cool. This is way more exciting than baseball. So they've developed a new pitching it's not machine. That hard. So basically, it's called Traject Tech, um, and this pitching machine can replicate any pitcher's pitch. I love this so much. So yeah, not only that, it's very but cool. um, they're doing they're using like video walls and projector screens to imitate a, a pitcher's um, release point. This is... um, so players during games are going back into the locker room or whatever, um, and practicing against the pitcher and the, their exact pitches because they can replicate exactly how the ball moves. So if you're not familiar with baseball, quick baseball 101. Um, pitching's a big deal in baseball, right? Pitching wins baseball games. And the way pitchers are able to throw the ball and release the ball and put spin on the ball uh, determines on, on how the ball moves bit. during that pitch. Back this up how a little bit. it drops is, or rises. What uh -huh. is pitching? There's two terms. Well, really one, to that to you. one, one, <laughs> one. Just there's, basics. there's two very closely related terms. There's one for sports, and then the other one, Jaron, you tell us about the other version of pitching. Uh oh. Uh -oh. There's pitching <laughs> and there's catching. <laughs> different things. Different, different things. things. Different things. Um, so hopefully you have the basics of baseball because I don't have time to explain all the basics. But basically, it's only been um, around for a few years. If but... you've watched it's major league new. pitchers, one of the one of the most interesting things to me is how they're able to throw the ball and make that ball move. Mm -hmm. um, and it creates a, a duel, if you will, between the pitcher and the batter on how that ball moves and what pitch they're going to throw. Mm -hmm. um, because if the batter knows what pitch you're going to throw, they know how the ball is going to move. But if you can trick them 
Oftentimes you can get a swing and miss, so on and so forth, right? So this new tech is able to replicate the the ball spin um, and how it gets released from the pitcher's hand as if it were the pitcher, um, which is a big freaking deal in the baseball this, world. Like, is this geez. is this yeah? Is this the same thing as cloning? Is this the same thing as using AI to make actors and stuff? Like like, like are you stealing their IP? That's something unique well, that's, to the person. A lot of pitchers are really upset by this yeah. technology because they're like, this feels like inside yeah. baseball. So yeah. to speak, right? Oh, yeah. This is like my trade secrets. This is my brand. This, this is feels my like a this pitch. like like this is no different than if if a pitcher is defined by their pitch. How is this any different than AI taking a song, so, uh, an artist, and and remaking the song in their with yeah, their voice? The precisely. GIF, the GIF I'm seeing here shows the pitcher, like a video of it's, the pitcher. Yeah. Does that mm-hmm. is that included in it? It, uh-huh. sh- it shows the projection of the picture. The pitcher. Yep. Oh, so cool. even their so even their stance and stuff. Because the, the where they because that's where they let, it's, yeah it's their it's called the release point where the ball yeah. leaves their hand mm-hmm. is a big deal. And how they stand and how they posture is how you know what they're mm-hmm. doing because that's, that's all bonkers. those are all tells. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So like I said, this is so players. Um. So usually what happens in the baseball game is the 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 opening pitcher or the um starting pitcher starting pitcher thinks <laughs> Uncle Swinky. <laughs> um, we'll go four, five, six innings, and then start going to what's called the bullpen, um, where they have relievers for the for the starting <laughs> pitcher. Um, so what's happening is teams will say, "Oh yeah, likely relievers are pitcher X, Y, and Z," and then the players during um, when they're not on defense will go in and practice those pitches on those on those during games. Like it's crazy. Oh wow, wow. So I I, I kind of hope they kind of create some rules around this because. This is getting pretty bonkers. Maybe, and also pitchers could use it too, right? To be like other pitchers. If there's some, yeah, you could crazy learn how to mimic style. Other you pitchers. Could... Uh... Well, there's there's always been well, you things could just watch like video of that. Um, mm-hmm. the the sports, um, medicine kind of stuff where they do like wireframes of the pitchers and the, how their how their um, mechanics work and like doing that yeah. kind of analysis. Like that's been around forever. Right. But this just takes it to the next level of like, not only are you doing analysis on. The pitcher's movement and how their pitches move, you're able to replicate them exactly and practice against them. Right. That just takes it to the next. Because level you know the opinion. start, you know, you know, but you know two points of data, right? You know the start and you know the end, and mm-hmm. then you can calculate. Well, you know the game. arsenal, and yeah. So wow. it's it's it's. Are, are they anything coming from the league on that, or is it is it allowed in Not MLB? As, as of right, right now, yeah. it's allowed, but it's mm-hmm. allowed. Crazy. This is technology outpacing. Yeah. Um, Rule making, rule making, yeah, yeah. yeah so the the thing is, this thing is crazy expensive too. Fifteen grand a month, of course, yeah. With yeah. a three year commitment, for sure. baseball, baseball teams will pay that. Oh, that's, that's chump change to them. Yeah, they're like, yeah, they're yeah, like, they're like, we eliminated two coaches with this, so you know, like they they get to eliminate positions with it and improve their team. Oh, that's a no brainer for them. Yeah, so it's it uses a gantry, allowing to split balls anywhere from four to seven feet off the ground. Um, it can move anywhere, so it's not just like. Ball, it's location of where the ball. It's crazy. All this stuff it does. Way more than any any. Sounds like Mark. Should. Sounds like Mark Rober made this. You know, does, like yeah. this is this is right this up his alley. He Rober's was like kind of stuff. Yeah, duplicating any pitch. So I'm look. I'm looking at the at the article, and I'm wondering if that machine can actually mimic somebody who throws sidearm. I would it think like, it can because because it, it looks like because it looks like all the all, all the pitching is coming from up there. Where if you go sidearm, you're coming down. Yeah, so if you look at the the first gift pretty closely, the the where the pitch is coming from can go up and down. So if it goes low enough, it can do sidearm. But it also has to go off to the side. It would need to move, yeah, further sure. out. Not, not, then there's not a lot of sidearms anymore. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just just questioning. Yeah, hmm. that'll be in version two. That'll be thirty thousand a month. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Um, we Uncle Squeaky has an update for our. Uh, our uh, uh, terrible, terrible uh, crypto lord, Sam Bankman Freed, and what's happening with him. Oh, Lord. Yes. Everybody was asking, by the way. Yeah. So here's, Where, here's... where's the queen? Well, if, we, you know, if we, Sam we know was the king, is. if Sam know, was the king of this project, we know right where she is now um, because she was in court today. And even though the, the federal p- parole system or department and the u.s attorney who prosecuted the case uh told the judge or asked the judge for probation 
the judge uh, said that because of the seriousness of this fraud, that a literal get out of jail free card, he cannot agree to that. So he gave her two years in prison. Two She's years. Like, nah. And she had returned her, her eleven billion dollars. Billion dollars. Oh, now, now, now what's now what's interesting is, from what I've read, and I, I've been an expert here, but apparently the um, FTX fraud was eight billion dollars, all in all. That's kind of the number that I've that I've that I've seen. Yeah. And when Bankman was uh, sentenced, Bankman freed. He was ordered to surrender eleven billion dollars, and now she's been ordered to surrender eleven billion dollars. That's a hmm. lot of billions. And, and I'm kind of wondering, out of eight like billion dollars that was originally stolen, why are we up, up to twenty-two billion dollars as forfeiture? I wonder if it's because of the price of crypto raised. Well, back up. maybe. Um, because and I'm also wondering too, because the uh, exchange itself was was valued at thirty-two billion at one yeah. point. So I wonder if so, that factors into it. Yeah, possibly. So uh, you end up with a situation where she actually, one of her big assets that was left over, apparently she had $10 million in shares in a startup, an AI startup called Anthropic. And that investment has grown substantially since she first bought them. Mm. And um, so th I'm guessing that's where they're, they're going to go after that. Yeah, um, I wonder how that works. Like, it, and like you invested what, with stolen gains. What, are what's all very your... interesting is that she's apparently the one who provided the bulk of the information that the U.S. attorney used to tie him into all the schemes. I think she thought she was selling so, him down the river for like, yeah, for and like so, immunity. Yeah, so 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 she was well, she wasn't going to get immunity, but she was going to get. Uh, consideration on her sentencing because she pled guilty to two different things. So I'm the, the the lawyer involved wanted her to get probation and the federal parole system wanted her to get probation as well. This what this way the way it kind of reads. So the fact the judge wasn't oh and judges aren't bound by the agreements between um, prosecutors and defendants. The judges can do right I dare say whatever they would like to do uh, uh, almost yeah. whenever they would like to do it. It's gotcha. more like guidelines. It's, it's you know, <laughs> if you if you ever saw the movie um, History of the World Part One, there was a, a recurring uh, phrase used in the French Revolution scene in that movie where it was, "It's good to be the king." It's good to be the king. And the simple yeah. fact of the matter is, when you're the judge, you're as close as there is to the king in that situation. Yeah. And and he wasn't buying into the the whole without regard to how how well she um, helped. And how valuable her contribution to the to the thing was, she still did this thing, so she has to pay for it. Now he got twenty five years, so yeah, she's only getting 25. two. Yeah. So so that's obviously some kind of you know. She must have pled out of a lot of the. She must have pled out of a lot of the. Oh, she did. The, she in, she in pled guilty. So. She like they pled probably guilty. reduced it a, a ton then. Oh yeah. So let's uh, see here. It says and evidence providing mm -hmm. evidence will go a long way. You know. Yeah. So let's see. The, the article. Well. The article says what she pled guilty to. I got to find it. It's. Uh, I wasn't actually focused on on that, but it was like a conspiracy charge, and wire uh, fraud, probably. You know, probably a count of wire fraud. She and the thing is, she vanished. I mean, mm -hmm. remember, like Sam yeah. Bingham freed. He was in his house that he quote bought his parents. That was also quote the corporate office, uh, in the Bahamas. But yeah, the she Bahamas. was. She was nowhere like her social media yeah the social media yeah. was gone i mean she vanished so she pled guilty to conspiracy and financial fraud charges yeah and apparently they dropped a bunch of other stuff against her um for cooperation for the cooperation and she testified against him and she was a very effective witness and she actually provided hard evidence that tied him into the criminal conduct which helped greatly the uh prosecution and get him taken care of that tied yeah. him to the criminal conduct but somehow yeah. spared her yeah, yeah. so well no, no 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 almost like accountants not, not at all can they pad that hey yeah. yeah obviously she had the spreadsheets yeah so, so she was so she was involved complicit. as well yeah and she and when she found out that the fraud was going on she didn't leave yeah which is part yeah. of the problem because if she would have just said oh this is this looks bad i'm leaving she'd be a lot less culpable for what was going on yeah. than the fact that she stayed with it and went and and 
went down the yeah. path. I'm looking at pictures of her coming out of the courtroom. She looks like the owl in the Tootsie Pop commercial that tells you it only takes three <laughs> You're right. yeah. to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. And for those that are like a quick recap on FTX is like they FTX was funding Almedia, which was another company. And then Almedia was like helping back up and prop up other uh, other yeah. mm-hmm. cryptocurrency exchanges, uh, writing out big loans to them um, while taking loans uh, from other people. And, and, and then it all it all collapsed Just and a whole bunch of fraud i mean so everything... many so many exchanges ate it because of that yeah. like they just were gone no more and so so when it when when they were arrested and when the when the indictment was was put out um they both faced a maximum of 110 years from all the charges that's yeah. a lot of for, years from all just the, be, had, had they it. had they gone with all the charges and been convicted of everything and the judge put everything together they would have got 110 years and whether or not it was going to be consecutive or concurrent is obviously up to the judge as well. Right. But he were got there 25. minimum, were there minimum requirements for any of those charges, um, like stuff they had to do? Not that I've seen, okay. but the, 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 the funny thing about federal sentencing guidelines is they're just that they're sentencing guidelines. Uh, I state, thought some, I thought some stuff came with a mandatory well, uh, sentencing. A lot of state courts actually have, um, mandatory sentences uh, now a lot of times what will happen with 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 the crime in general and i only know this because i've had to do a certain amount of research because of my job just you know i i, I read case files i i have to look laws up crime podcast it's okay just that kind of stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah not 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 at all um <laughs> but a lot of times like in nevada depending on the level of felony that you're convicted of it says a minimum of two and a maximum of 10 yeah. or a minimum of five and a maximum of 25, you know, depending on if it's a category D or a category E or a category A, which is life in prison is possible. Um, and when this, when the statute's written in a way that actually codifies the minimum sentence, the judge has to sentence at least the minimum. Yeah. Right. Now I would, I would assume, and this is an assumption on my part, and I've seen things that make <laughs> me think go. this is true that um stay with stay with the podcast baby sorry Come on lando <laughs> i thought i was muted <laughs> i thought you were speaking yeah but i don't say favorite kind well. of double play just happened so a lot of times what will happen is this, the judge will impose the sentence and then he will suspend it and during the and put you on probation or whatever and while that sentence is suspended if you misbehave it gets unsuspended and you go to and you go to penitentiary yeah, okay i see so kind of work around there the sentence is there but if you behave yourself there are times you can get out of it it's good to be king and in this case the judge said uh two two years is going to be what 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 you're going to get because i just can't let you walk away yeah interesting all right well there's the latest on that uh that craziness and now it's time for a quick lightning round and we're going to wrap things up uh, my lightning round is very fast. My lightning round uh, story. It actually isn't, doesn't even have anything to do with the story itself. This link I have here to a WCCF tech. Ooh, love it. Uh, WCCF tech article. This is the important part. Listen to, listen to this title. Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 to share same CPU cluster as Snapdragon 8 Gen 4. Sketchy rumor claims performance cores will function at 5 gigahertz doesn't matter what they say <laughs> about the cpu the fact is wccf tech is admitting in their headlines they're reporting on sketchy rumors that and it is, is so about wccf tech it is about time <laughs> that they they're just this they're nonsense just, we're just doing this just There's leaning a, into it just yeah. lean into it you know we really need clicks yep sketchy rumor reporting a la wccf tech we all know that it's going on everyone knew that so it's, yeah it's good to see you guys just 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 owning blaming it. it yeah front mm-hmm. and center all right lightning round number two jaron do you guys know what blue zones are yeah just because i read this article the supposed hot spots <laughs> in the world where people age they they live very long yeah. oh very, very i love sweet. this <laughs> yeah this is um, gonna put eastern medicine on its head finally uh so research has come out saying that blue zones are eastern. bunk it has to what? do Eastern document keeping. Yes. <laughs> How dare um, you? We, think it, we think it works. <laughs> so the guy's name is Saul Justin Newman. 
that's weird because I have a friend named Justin Newman, but it doesn't have Saul on there. Um, anyway, he says that he's tracked down 80% of the people aged over 110 in the world. Um, and of those... There are over 500 of these people. Seven have birth certificate. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry. Of those, almost none have a birth certificate. In the U.S., 500 of these people, seven have a birth certificate. Seven out of 500. In the U.S. In the U.S., yes. yeah. yeah. And, and, okay. and the U.S. has 1%. good record keeping usually. Yes. <laughs> yes. So Okinawa, it's one of those blue zones. It's based in Japan. Um, found out that 82% of the people aged over 100 um, turned out to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> is this guy dead? Nah, he's just 105. He's yeah. just tired. <laughs> That's in, Fred. In, Fred's in Oki- not dead. Quote Toshi. from the article in Okinawa: The best predictor of where the centenarians are is where the halls of records were bombed by the Americans during the war. Ah, there you go. Yes. So they're just saying, yeah, we got a bunch of people over 110. Mm-hmm. In uh, in Greece, 72 percent of the centenarians were dead, missing, or essentially pension fraud cases. Okay, people, hang on a sec. People Love getting the this. pension. This is classic Greece because you know what else? <laughs> Greece is a uh, huge. I don't know about they're well known for this, but I found out about it, and it was one of the most fascinating things ever. Greece has a tax on uh, uh, an estate on your home if you have a pool, and but you have to claim it yourself. You don't have to, they don't come by and check it. At least they didn't because they found out using satellite imagery that that everybody had a pool. Everybody had pools and it was something like 6% of the population that had pools were actually claiming it. Tax fraud. Nice. Uh, Same deal. Pension fraud for the the case in Italy. Um, So uh, the lesson to be learned here is don't always trust the data you get. Find mm-hmm. out if yeah. that data is is good so with, or not. So with pension oh. fraud, so with pension fraud, basically one of their relatives is saying, "No, no, no, grandma's check. still yeah. alive. Yeah, yep. grandma's still alive. We're we're still. Oh, that is seventy two percent. That's a lot. Crazy stuff. So yeah. I'm sorry, you blue zone people out there. I may have just <sighs> destroyed. I've your lost many. I've foundation. lost many an argument it, about it, about how you know we like. Well, we, we should move out of the U.S. or exactly. whatever place. People are like, it's just so toxic here. These pe- these people do better portions, better food. Their food yeah. is healthier. All of this stuff they do in those areas makes people live longer. Mm-hmm. Nah. Mm-hmm. Their yeah. food is tastier. <laughs> that could I've be. tasted it myself. It's really good. This is true. I had mm. Greek for dinner. It was delicious. That sounds delicious. <laughs> no, so, I, so I mean, should I decide to out move there. out of the country when I start drawing my pension? Is that what, is that what part of this is about? No, he sure because it's a it's bunk. You're not gonna live any longer if you go live no, by the but, Mediterranean. But what you yeah, you just but you just make sure somebody keeps cashing that check even after you pass away. <laughs> Good make times. Sure get the full amount on that pension. All milk right. That, milk that. Move. Boy, I tell you. Move. That's right. Lightning round for me? Yeah, can you do it? All one? right. I can. Here's okay. a lightning round. Kapersky got kicked out of the US. Yep. Guess what? You get new Ultra A V now. That's it. They did it without your permission. They installed Ultra AV and Ultra VPN. Two companies not connected in any way. This is how much control Kapersky had. Now, they got kicked out of the U.S. because the U.S. said they're a they're, they're, they're security threat. And they have way deeper access than you guys think they do. And then as a flex on the way out the door, as they're complying with the with the, the ban, um, they rip Kapersky off the machines and install Ultra VPN, an oh. unaffiliated company, and people just woke up to it. Just woke up to their computers. Mm. Ha- I mean, you have to have you have to have UAC admin access yep. in order to pull antivirus and in order to mess with antivirus in Windows specifically. Um, and they were using they used whatever they were running a system probably and pulled it off and reinstalled a. And, I mean, yeah, they put Ultra AV on and. Ultra VPN, if that's a good product, who knows? But they didn't have to do that program. They could have done any program. Sounds like a middle finger on the way out the door. Yeah. So <laughs> some somebody of theirs works at Ultra AV. It's like, uh, how are your servers doing? Hook me up. You know, so we, we want to get if our you, product on more. Uh, do things. you think that your servers could, ha- or maybe they're a competitor? <laughs> And they just bombed their, they just freaking <laughs> bombed their servers with him, you know, maybe it's a DDoS attack. It's a DDoS, so. yeah. 
Yep. All right. Well, we have reached the end. And uh, having reached the end of today's episode, I am now enacting a new rule. There is no watching of baseball while we podcast any longer. That is now outlawed. <laughs> Just as playing games with Jaren was outlawed. <laughs> that was years ago. That is you no longer an here. example. Here, here. And the podcast has been better for it for years, Jaren. Exactly. <laughs> and so now that rule is in place as well, starting now. There what are you going to no, do for your end user? You got you got no an end user? Watching right? an end user. Baseball. Oh. Watch baseball. Be an end user. There will be no watching of <laughs> baseball <probably it. laughs> during the podcast. Heretofore. 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 Watch Otani hit a home run. Be an end user. <laughs> All right. Uh, before, you're not helping, Squink. Before we get uh, out of here, big shout out to our awesome Patreon backers, patreon.com slash helpdeskarcade. Thank you so much for caring enough to donate to this silly little podcast. If you do $6 a month or more, you get a shout out on the air, which Jaron has for us right now. And our undying Thank love. Thank you. Thank you to David Roshinsky, Aaron Faulkner, Connor Keesaw, and Wolf of Tony. Thank you, guys. Jason Eatman, Mies Chonies, no mole climbs that can't be mountain hilled over. Grandmaster of Death Kwon Do, Be the Eight Year Old, Michael Shane, Tony the Home Theater Geek, Travis Johnson, Buy Geek Show, Arcade Help Desk Stickers at Pie Man Graphics on Etsy. All proceeds go to Lee George Cade's Medical Bills. Jeremy, No Name, No Color, Kesslo, Eric Steinman, Eric Cruz, the in between rating plus five. Oh, that was a good one. Come on. I Matt that was Nelson. A good one too. DP, Wesley, Adam, Stuart Lloyd. The problem with society is meatballs is tasty. And Ryan, thank you. Nailed it. All right. Thank you so much, Patreon backers. You are awesome. Okay. Uh, let's see what you have here for uh, You're not going to like it. You're level. not going to like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Go ahead. Baseball sport, best sport. Be an end user. My gosh. Oh,